Summer gardens, farmers markets, and roadside produce stands all make us feel closer to the food that we're eating. Knowing exactly where the beef in our burgers or the cucumbers for last season's pickles came from adds a little magic to something we have a tendency to take for granted. But is it possible for personal gardens and local producers to feed us all? Hi, I'm Alyssa from Southland Organics, where we provide natural solutions to natural problems for lawn, garden, and coop care. Learn more about these solutions at southlandorganics.com. No matter how you get the food you eat, one thing is for certain. That process looks immensely different than anything we could have predicted 10,000 years ago, or even 100 years ago. Imagine with me living in a time where the only real access to food was whatever the family had growing in the yard, could trade with close neighbors or relatives, or had stored from previous seasons. And what about a time where you had no home or no crop to harvest, where everything you ate came from hunting and gathering? Today, an ever-changing web of food products ensures that there is a near constant supply of easily accessible food. This has removed most of the regionality, dependence on growing season, and unpredictability that was, for a very long time, associated with food availability. After decades of infrastructure and development, our food supply chain has morphed from local operations to a global enterprise. According to USDA reports, the United States is the world's second largest agriculture trader behind the European Union. In 2022, agriculture products accounted for $196 billion in exports, more than triple the $62.8 billion from 1997. A large portion of exports are what the USDA considers high-value products, or HPVs. These include dairy products, meats, fruits, and vegetables. These massive increases in agriculture exports have been made possible by increasing demand and elimination of trade barriers. Trade barriers to Canada and Mexico were eliminated by the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, which made it possible to quadruple exports to both of those countries. Even the products that stay in the U.S. are destined for travel. For example, let's think about a fan favorite, chicken. Whether it's nuggets, wings, or whole birds, if you're eating chicken grown in America, there's a strong possibility that it was grown right here in Georgia, where we produce the most meat chickens in any state in the country. This enhanced international market for agriculture products has offered American farmers a new outlet to impact food supply globally, as well as a stronger sense of security in their ability to sell their end products. But it's not without its own problems. From transportation shortages to trade agreements, producers are impacted by issues that arise at all levels of this intricate supply chain, along with the normal risks associated with producing high volumes of crops or livestock, like disease and natural disasters. This doesn't begin to cover the social and cultural challenges producers are facing as consumer intrigue and backlash grows. Recently, the agriculture industry has been facing a new question from consumers. How do we know that our food is safe and nutritious? Although this global food market has opened new doors for producers, consumers have begun to question whether or not they can trust the food that they're buying at the grocery store due to high volumes being produced, the many stops it makes between the farm and the kitchen tables, and the environmental impact from commercial production. These concerns have paved the way for what some may consider a revolution of local eaters and homesteaders who believe that growing your own food or buying from a trusted local producer can provide an alternative. This way you know not only where your food came from, but also exactly who grew it and how. As this demand for a presumably higher quality food source has grown, dedicated Facebook groups, farmers markets, on-farm stores, and roadside stands have steadily increased in number. Now, instead of going to the grocery store and buying a steak that came from somewhere in the U.S., there's an option to buy beef from a producer 20 miles away and know exactly what the animal was fed, its breed, and where it was raised. And consumers are loving it. In fact, more than $9 billion in agriculture revenue could be attributed to local sales of fresh and value-added products like butter and cheese in 2020. Within this movement, there are some with more drastic beliefs that locally grown food is the only option to ensure safety, sustainability, and nourishment. But is that an option? If we wanted to, could we go back to a time where global enterprise didn't determine our food supply? Could we feed ourselves solely through local sales and trade? Let's take a closer look. 
Estimations can be made for the amount of land needed to provide food for a single person based on nutritional need. Conservative estimates say that one person can produce enough fruits and vegetables for a year on about 3.25 acres. Now, before we go any further, let's remember that this number doesn't take into account any crop losses or inopportune weather conditions, which is not uncommon when growing food. In the United States alone, the 2022 census reported 333,287,557 people. But for simplicity, we'll use 333 million. If each person needs 3.25 acres, that would mean a grand total of over a billion acres of land. At first glance, that seems like it wouldn't be a problem since the United States covers more than 2.3 billion acres. The complicated part of the equation is when you start to consider space already covered by cities, bodies of water, homes, and land that's not suitable for growing food, like mountains, deserts, and marshes. Taking all this into account, you start to realize that the land mass we have available to us is simply not enough for us to grow a substantial enough food supply for us all to feed ourselves without some form of commercial agriculture. And this is a theme that's echoed globally. The truth is, there's not a simple or a single answer. For some, growing their own food is a way of life, a passion, and a sustainable practice. But for others, this may not ever be an option because of time, space, and physical ability. There are even folks, like me, that lie somewhere in between. I grow a summer garden and love every bit of food it provides for me, my family, and my friends. I never shy away from an opportunity to support a local producer. But I also value the ability to walk into a grocery store and purchase the things I wouldn't otherwise be able to enjoy. We live in a time where food has become incredibly more accessible than it was for generations before us. We're connected to global markets simply through the food that we eat, and we're lucky to have the opportunity to make a choice between growing our own foods and buying the food provided for us by hardworking farmers across the globe. Homegrown, local, or commercial, the choice for your family is in your hands. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at alyssa at southinorganics.com, call 800-608-3755, or comment on this video. Keep up with us on social media at South Inorganics. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this video can provide you with a bit of clarity when it comes to making the right decisions for your family's food.